It's not often a gun maker releases a gun where I get flooded with messages asking to review it. This is the latest offering from Churchill's The Hercules, an Italian action that has been finished, stocked, pretty much made beautiful in England. Today we're going to have a really good look over it. First impressions, it is stunning. So just for the sake of clarity, before I get the gun out, the Hercules model has existed before, or the name has existed before. First, it was a Birmingham box lock, and there's actually one behind me we'll look at right at the end of this video, because it's epically cool. Uh, then I believe it was a French built over and under, and then I believe it was a Spanish built side by side, but now it is a different animal altogether, and one that definitely needs to be respected. So, let me grab it out. Here is the 2020 Hercules over and under. It is stunning. So starting at the back, and it's worth mentioning that everything from the action back is completely customizable. When you buy one of these guns, you can have it built to your specs, or at least your stock dimensions. Inherently, all customization options are available. You can pretty much build this however you want, but to keep it inside of the price point, you can't go too wild obviously. There's one in the cabinet behind me with a pad. This one is just finished in wood. The wood is grade five and shows the first sort of English custom part they've done here. This gun is an Italian gun and they don't hide any facts about that. It's an Italian block and action. However, it being finished in England gives it a real another sense of luxury. They really anglicize it, finish the action, repolish the internals, London finish the stock, and actually give this machine a sense of luxury you wouldn't get if it was straight from the original manufacturer. Apart from the beautiful London finish and the high grade wood, what you have is a beautifully specced stock. The lines, the taper, the way this stock tapers into the nose there, it's nice, it's sharp. The grip, dimensions, everything about it actually is extremely English. It feel, doesn't feel continental in the slightest. Not that continental guns are bad. I suppose what I'm trying to say is in the hand this gun has all the hallmarks of an English best gun. The gun is laser checkered but then it feels as though someone's actually chased that out by hand just to give it a little bit more depth and a little bit more sharpness. This is a side plated trigger plate action so all of the working parts are put onto this block here. That gives you the great trigger pulls, the great reliability that trigger plates have. You know, it's going to be a fairly bulletproof action. And on this action, just wow, it is a beautifully, beautifully designed, bold acanthus scroll work. And that goes across its entire side plate, around the rounded corners of the bottom, up over the trigger guard, the elongated trigger guard, and down onto the grip cap. It's nice. It's luxurious. It's got a lot of beautiful features that you won't get in other guns, and that is nice. The engraving is done predominantly by laser. But the fact that it is hand finished allows you the nice flash cuts that give this gun a huge amount more depth. And again, that luxury feel. All four, realistically, is a very affordable price for a gun that looks like this. You have a gold inlaid EJ Churchill, and this is actually one of a pair. So you've got the numbers one, one, and one on the fore end, and his brother that we're going to take out in a minute, or sister potentially, is, um, well, equally beautiful with the twos on. It has an automatic safety with a selective single trigger. The trigger is in silver, which is a really nice touch. Again, brings it into the English category and away from the continental category a little bit by being silver. On the bottom of the gun, you have the Churchill crest established 1891 with Hercules in gold once again. And that crest can be seen also on the top lever. It is a beautiful gun. It really is a beautiful looking gun. I said auto safe, but you can spec it either way. And if it was me, I'd probably go for a non-selective safety catch. But that's just me and my personal preferences. Here is where it gets really exciting to me, the boss style four end iron. I always think that adds an element of class to a gun. It really does, it's a good looking thing and just allows that, you know, the reason we have side plates is to increase the area that can be made beautiful. And the reason you have the boss style four and iron almost is the same. It just makes that long piece of beautiful engraving flow together. It's just another canvas for the people to work on. And there is some strength benefits to it if you really want to get anal, but you know, 
that's not the reason you're doing it really it just looks awesome the forend is a nice classic rounded american english style forend the forend is attached by a push button on the front there and where this gun is hand regulated you can actually start to see it on the outside here that forend loop is all polished up really nicely finished and the actual regulation of just putting that forend on and off feels good it's these little things that really sets a gun like this apart from other guns in the price bracket that and you see these beautiful pieces of metal sculpted onto the, the barrels here actually just has a seamless fit from your forend onto the barrels it's a real touch of quality and again features you generally won't find unless you're spending absolutely mega money the barrels are stamped 12 gauge 3 inch magnum and ej churchill of london they are high pressure steel shot proofed they come with uh, italian proof which is where they are originally proofed with the action they're an 18.4 bore so quite tight quite traditional you have an eight millimeter to six millimeter tapered solid top rib which actually gives a beautiful sighting plane and the way that stock is specced you can see just a little bit of rib at the moment but you can have have that however you wanted you have a solid mid rib and fixed chokes in terms of barrel specifications you can have 28 inch 30 inch or 32 inch and you can have it in a 16 a 20 or like this a 12. this 12 ball in a 30 inch variant is seven pounds ten that puts it fairly high i would have said in its weight class i would have expected it to probably top out a little bit a little bit lighter than that 7.6 that's where most people head with their game gun 7.4 7.6 with a fixed choke 30 inch game gun but you have that much more center mass here a little bit of extra weight in the barrels but most of that is negated by the fact it's fixed choke the weight in this gun really is in the middle so when you're holding it like that you can feel the mass of the gun but as soon as it's split between your hands it rotates around that center pivot so fast it's worth noting that again in the custom option setup I believe that the fixed choke is actually a custom option. They come as a multi-choke as standard, which might be handy ongoing with steel shot and the future of cartridges, just allow you to have a bit more versatility. However, the handling of this fixed choke gun alone would make me want to just own this, bang a pair of quarter chokes fixed in it and just enjoy myself. So a lot of people may be thinking at this point, is it worth getting or paying the premium for an EJ Churchill gun? that is made in Italy, but stamped E.J. Churchill and finished in London? Well, I'm gonna put this one away, get the one I'm gonna shoot out, go and shoot it, and then tell you in a conclusion. It wouldn't be right, by the way, as a lover of things, not to mention this beautiful cabinet these guns are in. This is, I think, made by the Bespoke Gun Cabinet Company. So many of us buy awesome guns and then lock them away in cheap steel boxes. The concept of buying a real luxury item and then not looking at it, and I'm I'm probably less guilty of it because, you know, I, I get to see them at work every day, but can you imagine having such a beautiful machine and not being able to look at it every day? I think there's something like these really are the future. I think they start at about 10 grand, which feels a lot. But given in this cabinet, you know, we're looking at a few hundred thousand pounds worth of guns and they make them smaller and, you know, it just always makes a lot of sense to me. And like I said, as a, a lover of fine things, it's been like gun cases, guns, quality cartridge magazines. There's something very tactile about it and it is extremely nicely made. Anyway, let's go and see. I am excited. We've established that it looks really nice. Let's shoot it. It moves well, that extra weight in the middle, you can feel it. Oh! <laughs> to be blunt, I was prepared for this gun to be a little bit style over substance. You know. But it moves. It moves like a 10 grand gun. <laughs> All right, I passed the stand earlier and I couldn't resist coming for a little shot. I don't really know what the crack is, but you know, get the opportunity to come and stand on a giant Lush Mo platform. Yeah. 
There's an automatic safety, as we've just discovered. So this gun is genuinely a little bit of a surprise. I was expecting, yeah, it's got a lot of center weight and it's a little front heavy on overall balance. I was expecting it to be a little bit gamey, to be blunt. I was expecting it to be, and when I say a gamey, I mean designed for less steady shooting. You know, a bit sucky on these sort of clay style clays. But actually, instead of a sports car, this is more of, it's a, it's a little grand tour, you know? It's got all of the luxuries of a large vehicle while still being able to move like a sports car. And the analogy would say that, that this gun moves like a heavy gun, but it feels like a light one. That is as much as I can give it as a compliment, which is a bloody good compliment because so many people try and miss that mark. The modern game gun doesn't want to be like a lot of people are producing game guns. Most people are buying sporters to go and shoot game guns because they handle like this. This is actually represents a fantastic crossover between what people are buying to shoot game and what people would like a game gun to look like. I think for 10 grand with a custom stock, hand finished engraving and nice little personal touches, it's pretty good. It's a very tempting offer at 10 grand. Very tempting. I just think what else you can get in that price point? Some great guns, but not many that look this good and handle well. I'm gonna shoot it some more. To be frank and honest, I was definitely prepared for this gun to be a letdown. I honestly thought for 10,000 pounds with a custom stock build, a leather case that it comes in, the boss style forend, the English finish, the effort they put in, I was expecting it to shoot badly, which in hindsight, was probably immature of me to think that these guys who hadn't really overlooked anything would overlook handling and shootability at the forefront. I guess all too often you see pretty guns at that sort of high thousands but sub 10 grand price point and think, well, it's just a more polished version of a lesser gun. There's nothing actually tangible about it that makes it good. I know that it's not a great big deal, but the midweight that is in this gun makes it unbelievably shootable. The speed, the precision, the calculation, and yet the flow and fluidity that this gun has, it doesn't have to be seen to be believed, but it definitely competes at the price point. Often people ask, well, I want something that shoots like X or Y and looks like Y and Z, and you go, well, those things rarely don't come together. You can't have a gun that shoots really well and looks really good for, for this sort of money. Generally speaking, you're into your, your Purati, High Dex, your Kriegoffs, and new the Longthorns, 12, 13,000 pounds for a fairly basic looking gun. And I'm not saying this gun can compete in those circles, but it's not designed to either. This gun is designed as a really beautiful all-rounder that you can go and enjoy game with, come to somewhere like Churchill's and shoot around a clays for a bit of practice and a bit of fun and hold your own against those other boys. It's nice. Like, it's really nice. And I am utterly pleasantly surprised. Utterly pleasantly surprised. The concept of taking a gun from somewhere else and finishing it in-house, well, Churchill's been doing it for a century. Other gun makers have been doing it for equally long. There's nothing new about that. And I know a lot of people will go, well, it's not fully English. And I appreciate that it's not fully English, but it's not a fully English price either. To get this gun made in England will cost two, maybe three, four times what this does at a very bare minimum. And I suppose it depends how important it is to you. If you want an English gun, then this gun isn't for you, a truly English gun. But if you want a gun that's got a real English feel, that looks, I mean, it looks a million bucks, doesn't it? All right, I'm gonna stop waffling and say that, generally speaking, this gun was just easy to shoot. And any gun that you pick up that is easy to shoot and beautiful needs attention. It does need attention. And that is my thoughts on it. I like it. There you go. I like it. I like the gun. If I buy it, I display it nicely. But 
Modern gun completed, it's time to look at the original Hercules, the Birmingham built box lock side lever, 10 ball. And I know this isn't really what the video is about, but it would be wrong not to have a look at it anyway, because it's big and beautiful. Anything that's not a top lever inherently, I am endeared to. And the lines of it really dip away to guarantee a nice sleek feel in the rest of the armor. It is a sweet design of gun and the lines on it are pretty radical. It's curvy, it's beautiful. Uh, the, it's been rebarreled by William Ford at some point or another, 15 St. Mary's Road, Birmingham. But the action is a Hercules finest quality or Hercules model finest quality. It's a proper best box lock. Beautiful scroll on there, beautiful bordering. You know, there's a lot about this gun that has absolutely nothing to do with the other one apart from in name. But what a beast. The Joe Churchill finishing. It's a similar concept is they've taken a really good and solid box lock action and finished it to a really high standard, put some nice wood on it. I would have thought the pad came a few years later, finished and regulated it in the best possible standard. And although this gun is not an original state, it's still a Hercules. It still belongs in this video because I probably wouldn't make a separate one on it. Isn't it beautiful? And even more beautiful because the beautiful non-selective safety catch. And I am a child and I will dog on that gun as the only thing I dislike about it is the selector on the safety. But I know that people like that too. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as we have being here and shooting that gun. Like I said, there was a lot to play for with it. And, well, I am very, very pleasantly surprised. Not surprised. Reaffirmed. It's a great gun. Go and check one out.